Good morning, guys. Oh, afternoon. Feels like morning because I'm still in my jammies. <laughs> anyway, we're going to be starting the next section, next chapter on skeletal system. In particular, this is 4 1. And this is going to do everything having to do with the bones the skeleton, naming the bones, how bones are produced, anything and everything having to do with bones. So today's notes are just going to be on these two items cartilage and bones. Cartilage that we find, uh, we typically refer to a skeletal cartilage because it's attached to or in reference to the skeleton. And there's three different types, hyaline, elastic, and fibrocartilage, which is the same type that we saw in the tissues chapter. And then we're going to take a look at just the four basic types of bones that we find inside of the human body. Okay, so we're going to start with skeletal cartilage. It's called skeletal cartilage because it's attached to the skeleton. And this type of cartilage is full of water, which makes it really good for absorbing shock and pressure has no blood, no nerve vessels, and so it doesn't have, um, you know, if you cut cartilage, it doesn't bleed you, and you shouldn't feel it. Now the surrounding tissues have blood and nerves in them, so you'll be able to feel the damage to the surrounding tissue, but from the cartilage itself, wouldn't it actually hurt? Now what we find is um, the cartilage makes our bones, and so it starts out, our cartilage starts out kind of bone-shaped, and it's surrounded by a membrane that we call the perichondrium. Peri meaning around, and then chondro meaning cartilage. Like we learned, remember we talked about the hypochondric region was below the cartilage of your ribs. So the perichondrium is just this layer of dense irregular connective tissue that kind of surrounds the skeletal cartilage and keeps it all intact. So it's like the boundary around it. Now the Oh, look, I said that again. Contains no blood nerve vessels. It says so right there. Okay, guess I was being redundant. So here's a little picture showing you different types of cartilage that we find. Uh, if you look at the blue, the green, and the red are the main ones. The hyaline cartilage, elastic, and fibrocartilage. And we'll go over each of these and show you where each one is found. All right, so let's start with just the basic classification of the three different types. There's three kinds of skeletal cartilage. Hyaline, elastic, and fibro, and these are the same ones we learned back in the tissue chapter. They all have the same stuff making them up. Chondrocytes, which are the cells. So here is this little guy right here. That's one chondrocyte. Remember, site means mature cell. Blast means a growing cell, so that's an immature cell. And they also have the extracellular matrix, which is just all the stuff around them that's not alive, such as ground substance and fibers. Okay, so we're going to first look at the hyaline cartilage. Hyaline cartilage is the most abundant of all the cartilage that, that we have in our body. It's very flexible, very resilient, so you can do a lot of damage to it, and it springs back just fine. The chondrocytes in here says they appear cylindrical, and there's lots of collagen fibers. So all in the matrix around it is collagen fibers around there. And there's four types of hyaline cartilage depending on where it's found. So we've got articular cartilages, cartilages, and these guys we usually find at the end of bones. So it's the, we're looking at the blue right now. So you can see they're right there, right there, uh, covering that bone, covering right there. So all of those are articular because that's where your bones articulate, which means to come together. So anywhere where there's a joint, we call that an articulation. So articular cartilage, cartilages, I can't say that word, uh, cover the articulations. Okay. And then we have the costal cartilages. Costal always refers to ribs. So these are right here kind of looks like a little butterfly, and they connect the ribs to each other and the ribs to the sternum. Then we have respiratory, and as you know what your respiratory system is, so these cartilages support the larynx, which is your voice box, and the trachea right here, so that keeps it nice and open. And then we have nasal cartilage, which supports, circle, this part, the squishy part right there your nasal cartilage. So all of these are hyaline cartilages and they're made to withstand lots of pressure. 
Okay, the second type we have is elastic cartilage. And as it sounds, it should be more elasticy, so it's stretchy. It's made out of elastic fibers. And it can handle repeated bending. So like your ear can handle being bent several times. And it goes back to normal every single time. Hi. And here come the children. So as you can see on this one, the chondrocytes are much more packed together, more closely. <laughs> Dork, go away. Are more closely pack, packed together. And there's only two spots you find elastic cartilage. One is your ear and your epiglottis, which is a little flap in the back of your throat that prevents the food from going down the wrong pipe most of the times. So here's an easy way to remember this one. Elastic, epiglottis, ear. They all start with E. Makes it easy. Okay, and then we have the fibrocartilages. These are the toughest. These are the strongest of the dudes. They're highly compressible and tensile. They consist of parallel rows of chondrocytes. You can almost see them kind of all lined up like this. And very thick collagen fibers. So I've got this picture here. We can see the rows of chondrocytes. And let's see, where's the fibers? Here's the little fibers in between. They're pointing them out right there. Okay? Only found in two spots. One is in the knee, because think about all the stress your knee t takes. And two, in the vertebrae, uh, which are between each of the spines. <laughs> I'm going to pause now. Okay, I think I left off somewhere around talking about where these things are found. So, fibrocartilage, really tough, so we need them in areas that can handle, uh, or that need a lot of stress. So, in the knee, because your knee takes a beating, and then in the discs between the vertebrae, because they get beat up on a daily basis. Okay, now, there's two main ways that cartilage grows. One is called appositional growth, the other is called interstitial growth. In appositional growth, the chondrocytes in the perichondrium secrete new matrix against the existing cartilage and it grows inwards. So if we have a cartilage-shaped wannabe bone, appositional growth is where the perichondrium, which was that outer layer right here, they secrete new matrix and it goes in. And so it basically grows from the outside in. So in this picture over here, you can see that here's a, the periosteum. Uh, sorry, that's the outside of the bone, but it shows the same idea. Is that it just kind of grows around the blood vessel here. And as you can see from here, it's growing in and trapping this little blood vessel inside. So it's growing from the outside in. Whereas in interstitial growth, it grows from the inside out. So the chondrocytes, they make the new matrix. Here's chondrocyte right there. And they make the new matrix, which expands outwards like this. And then they kind of move apart from each other and then fill in the blank spots around them. And so this is from the inside out. So appositional, outside in, interstitial, inside out. And they both occur at the same time in order to make your bones grow. And then what happens is the process of calcification, which is when calcium salts are deposited in the matrix, and then they get rougher, or tougher. And then after a little while, they become bone. So they don't, they're not bone right away, it's just calcified cartilage. But then after a while, they do eventually turn into bone. Okay, up next is gonna be the types and functions of bones. So on the very first page, said there were four different types of bones, long bones, short bones, flat bones, and so on. So we're going to do that in the next section. So thank you, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.